The view here on the server keeps getting better and better. I mean, what more could you ask for at the end of a hard day here on the server? We have the mountains, the sunset, Smith's two beautiful houses, Grumpy's tree house right over here, my beautiful base with the blue wool roof. Oh, what more could you ask for? It's an absolutely beautiful day on the server and it's an absolutely beautiful start to our episode. And before we get started, I just wanted to ask anyone I don't know if you can kind of see that kind of on the horizon there. I, mean, I hope that YouTube's compression like gets rid of it. But if I look up here, you see like these waves of light emanating. Uh, if anyone knows what this is and how I can disable it without making the lighting look absolutely ugly, I'd really appreciate it. I have been looking for an answer for this for like a year and a half now, and I just can't figure it out. I know that if I turn off smooth lighting, it stops, but then the world looks like... Um, garbage it's actually quite mesmerizing right now but most of the time it's really really annoying so if you know how to fix this up please let me know down in the comments i would really 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 appreciate it uh but night has fallen we're gonna go ahead and sleep in our bed and it is time for us to get started with what's hopefully going to be an exciting episode hello there beautiful pixels my name is Aladrium, and welcome back to bedrock here on the project bedrock season two server and today on this episode we're going to be taking care of our complete lack of experience and i'm not talking and playing minecraft no i'm talking about getting the experience we need to start enchanting things and building up our levels and tools and to do that we're going to head over to a skeleton spawner that i found over here on the server this is going to serve two purposes number one we're going to have a skelly spawner that'll generate us plenty of arrows and bows bows are going to be useful for dispensers which we're going to need a lot of and also just to show how easy it is to set one of these up and have yourself some nice early game experience without too much hassle now i know what you're probably all thinking aladrium don't you already have diamond armor isn't it already enchanted and the answer is yes and no you see i have armor that i needed to have in order to make my streams function but i'm not too thrilled about having that I really wanted the type of armor that I'm going to be carrying around forever and ever to be kind that I mined from my own diamonds and from my own experience and farm. So I found the skelly spawner over here and we're going to make this into the world's simplest skeleton farmer. Now, Eladrium, you're probably asking, don't you already have your own diamond armor? Well, the answer is yes and no. You see, I did get a set of diamond armor from Sunflower's pop-up shop because I needed it to function on my live streams. You should come check us out Monday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. But I haven't been very thorough about where those goods and supplies are coming from. You see, I would really like that my goods and services to come from ethically sourced places, places where villagers have free air, they have plenty of space to walk around, they have good sleeping accommodations, and I just haven't done my due diligence yet on Sunflower's shop to make sure that I'm getting ethically sourced materials of my own. So for the time being, I'm going to be gathering my own experience, gathering my own diamonds and my own materials, at least until I can verify and do my own due diligence that the goods and services that I am receiving come from ethically sourced locations. Now, if you've never done a skeleton farm before or any type of farm that uses the dungeon spawner, they're very, very simple. All you need to do is light up this spawner that you have right here and you're going to dig out a four by four area, four on top, four on the bottom, four on each side, create itself a water stream and uh, shove them down into a hole to grind them into powder and dust. So when that's all said and done, and this takes quite literally five minutes to do, you have something that looks a little bit like this. Skeleton spawner in the middle, you just saw them spawn right behind me, four spaces, top, bottom, left, right, front, back, a block, two spaces up so that they get knocked down, and then water streams that flush them down into a hole it is really that simple and on bedrock edition you can have a trident killer in place which uh, if i go down here and flip this lever right on this piston to activate this nope not that i'm gonna go up here uh you can see that this trident killer makes very very quick and simple work of them i don't even have impaling or any other type of enchantment on this but at the rate that these skeletons spawn assuming that i don't just leave them to clump up like this by the time one comes down, I have already cleared out all of them. This is a very, very simple way to get experience here in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Additionally, we have the added benefit of all of the bows that these guys drop. These guys drop so many bows, and obviously that's a really good thing because you can make yourself a very powerful bow just by stacking the enchantments that are on them. But the more important thing is that we can use this for dispensers because bows do not stack which make them so incredibly frustrating to make and as you can see here i have one two 
three, four, and then the rest of these are also basically filled with uh, bows and bones. The bones, we're going to grind down in the bone meal for uh, more decorating purposes in the armor. I've just kind of been chucking it out to the side. I, uh, I don't really need it. So... Uh, very simple and easy to make skeleton farmer. I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial here in this middle of this episode that was not very descriptive other than just build it. Sorry, that was very much uh, and, and now build the rest of the owl type tutorial. I apologize for that. Quick fun thing about this, though. Did you know that you can use crafter basically as a storage chest? Uh, yeah, super duper convenient. I think that you could also hide stuff in here. Great idea for an escape room if you're thinking about it. Hiding something inside of a crafter. I don't think that people would expect to find things in there and go looking, especially since it's a relatively new block. But anyway, with all of this experience, we have 49 levels now. I was I was going to get 50, but I, you know, that's just kind of it right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself another looting three book. And uh, well, there goes that anvil. That's great. We'll take this to a, another one of the farms that I have up and running and uh, it's time for us to go start enchanting some things and show you what my plans are to make our enchanting setup over in our base. So for my initial enchantments on my armor, I really want them to come from an enchanting table. And I might rock the uh, enchantments that I have from the enchanting table for a little bit while. I'm not entirely sure whether I'm going to eventually get traits from villagers or whatnot. But at this point, you know, I've done the villager thing so many times that I am just sick of corralling villagers. It is just, I'm just over it. And uh, not to say that I won't use villagers here in the future, but if I do use them, I'm going to try using them a little bit differently. I think the whole corralling them in pins thing is just, Mojang needs to fix it. And handling villagers by making the trades more restrictive, I don't think solves the problem. I think that making it so villagers need to be able to sleep on a bed and need to be able to walk around for a certain number of time in order to get their trades back. The Mojang needs to add some additional mechanic into the game that forces you to have villagers in a more non-farmy type way. I don't know how else to describe it other than villagers need to give you trades and give you deals only if they are basically able to live uh, rather than just be thrown up in a pen. I think that the mechanic is a little bit done. But anyway, what I'm thinking about for our enchanting room, and I have to go back down here because I've uh, lost some of my books. So yeah, I was looking for my lapis because I wanted to see what levels we got. If we zip around back up here, what I was thinking for this enchanting area is having this area on the inside be more or less uh, hide all of these redstone lamps. I want the redstone lamps hidden on the inside, and then we'll just have kind of this off kilter enchanting setup here in this room. Maybe we might need to blow a wall out over here in order to make that fit a little bit better. But I'm thinking that if we have this kind of off kilter, we have some some uh, slabs or some stairs kind of put upside down with some greenery and things. This could be a really glowing and a beautiful place and it makes good use of this space which i'm not really able to use for anything else because of well the the levers on the redstone lamps i wish that there was a way that i could light up the redstone lamps a little bit better i know that i can use a redstone block with a wire on top of it but that only translates a few blocks and i want something uh, to carry uh, basically a little bit more. So probably just going to do things over here in the corners. I can probably get these two levers that I have right here on my left sorted out by using the redstone block. But um, yeah, we're going to have to solve for that a little bit later. So here's what I've come up with. I think I'm going to stack a couple of books and maybe some chiseled bookshelves, have some hanging materials that come on down. All of these now I can enchant. So touch for a first enchant, I think is also pretty great. Like I'm not going to complain about that at all uh, because I did lose my one silk touch pickaxe that I have. I have a bad, I have a problem here in Minecraft. I lose things that are incredibly valuable so easy. Part of it is I think is I have a kind of a inclination to use a green shulker box because it's, you know, the thing that I find pretty ooh, efficiency for isn't bad at all. But like I'll put something down and I just won't know where I put it. Like I had a, a pretty good enchanted silk touch pickaxe and i just have no idea where it ended up at so uh that's okay though we can use the diamonds that we mined from underneath that ancient city we found previously and uh we're getting some pretty good enchantments on them so far 
I'm hoping that maybe we can get fortune on one of these pickaxes that I have. Um, oh, protection four is not bad. Oh, that's actually a pretty good enchant overall. Let's see here. Diamond shovel. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to go grab some more levels from a couple other places. But I think overall, this is off to a fairly good start for our first set of enchants. So now with ourselves fully geared up, I think it's safe for us to take on another adventure. We're going to head over to Merely Adequate and um, we're going to build ourselves a gas farm. Don't worry, everybody. We will explain the alley thing a little bit, but we'll probably get on our way on the adventure here in a moment before we do this. <laughs> yeah, but um, oh gosh, what, what was the other thing? Okay, so uh, you've gathered most of the materials. We need to go get tritons from the uh, guardian farm, which shouldn't be yeah, that yeah. big of a deal to get. And um, and get a little bit of XP, I think. Um, and then we're going to oh, attempt this once. Oh, oh, XP is not a problem. Oh, well, I know it's not a problem for you, <laughs> but like... It's not a problem. Well, once we get over there, it's not a problem for you either. I know, I know. I'm, I'm taking it slow, and then we decide, well, we'll just go over to uh, 5,000 blocks in the nether and make a gas farm. Yeah, it's like, oh, I, I enjoy it. I'm going to do the early game. How about a gas farm? <laughs> Well, we have enough people who have made, like, creeper farms where, I don't know. Is a creeper farm exciting to build? Probably not. Is a gas farm exciting to build? If we die a hundred times, you bet your bottom dollar it is. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, can, I, can I ask you a question? You may. H have you seen my magic sand over here? Um, yeah, I saw this when I came over earlier. It looks like, uh, it looks a little bit like dirt. Well, it, it it's sand, and then it, it on its own will turn into dirt. That's weird. Totally random. I I, I it's, I've never seen that before. I wonder if um, what if we bone mealed it? Will it turn into moss? Think it turn back into sand? Oh, is this like a moss egg? Can we grow a new moss? Okay, so um, sorry, I'm just moving some stuff around because my whole desk is a mess. Um, da, 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 yeah. So I think what we should do is we should do nine of these five by five platforms. Yes. Uh, maybe seven. I think it's actually, I, I like the number seven tonight. So this right. is five by five. And then there's another five by five right behind it. And we just need to make this. Um, wow. Ah. Really? That went right over my head and I still got burned. So look, okay, that's a five by five. So how far away is the next five by five? Right next to it. So it would be another one, two. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Two, three, four, five. This, so this, this is the this, next one. This, this is the center one. Yes, this is the center one. Okay. So okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And okay. then we just need to fill this in. And this is Great. layer one. So just a long strip, yeah? Yep. Now, one thing that you should do, since you have the torches, is place at least one torch down in each five by five area, because otherwise skeletons will start spawning over here. Okay. Then, like with this farm, they have to be slabs, because otherwise it'll affect the spawning of it. Hey, what now? So I'm if not I, using slabs. Oh yeah, you gotta use slabs, buddy. Holy crud, man! You're, you're, you're but you you pill it out here without slabs. I know. All of this is gonna go away. Okie dokie. So adequate worked on that farm during our stream. We have it every Monday, uh, 8.30 p.m., 6.30 Pacific time, every Monday. Uh, you should drop by if you don't hang out. It's usually a lot of fun, and uh, we do some really crazy fun things. You should definitely come on by. Anyway, after the stream, I stayed on for a little bit longer just to finish this up, and we now have ourselves a fully functional gas farm. And as you can see right behind me, gas spawn in, and then immediately our out of this world uh, and we are collecting quite a bit of materials here if I do say so myself we have gunpowder and we have gas tears and um that's a lot of materials if you haven't seen this it is an obscene amount of materials I'm thinking that we're gonna give people in crystals of their own probably on a piece of obsidian somewhere in their base but if you look over here, I set up a very simple item sorter we have about half a double chest of gas tears and then 
a little more than half of gunpowder. This is after like an hour and a half of using this farm. So uh, overall, the rates are pretty, pretty good, if you ask me. Um, it does take a while for this farm to like kick in. You're going to be here for a couple of days AFKing in order to have a decent amount to last you a good long time. But if you AFK at this like for a few hours every day, you'll have plenty of materials. And as you can see right there, it really doesn't matter if you have uh, not all the spots covered appropriately. Like there's probably a few spots over there where I'm off by one or um, the uh, there's not a double minecart where the trident killer is. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because these gas spawn in so quickly. They either die if they uh, get captured by a minecart or they float back in and get carried back up or they just fly away outside of the spawn sphere and they just immediately despawn. So uh, overall, I would say that this is a pretty effective farm and we did it most importantly without dying. That is the, the real miracle right here, I think. Now at the beginning of the clip from our stream, we did promise that we'd explain the alley joke. Um, during Sunflower stream, someone mentioned that my name actually should be Allie instead of Ale or Aladrium, uh, which is what people have been calling me. I have a lot of nicknames on this server. It's very, very new. Anyway, to set the record straight, my name is Aladrium. Some people might call me Ale. Uh, this is Allie. Allie is my camera account, and she does all the hard work on the server of making sure that I have materials. She stands around with a looting three sword and gets the job done. Uh, but that allows me to go and take care of some other work I have. And that job at hand is admiring Smith Customs handiwork here on the path. And this is exactly what I was talking about at the end of my last episode about giving the eye something visually interesting to constantly look at. So empty field here, boring. Smith and I are gonna need to collaborate that. Beautiful path. You have constant eye candy to look at. Something always new is on the horizon. The pattern is broken up. We have these leaves and these mud walls on the side, the trap doors that really help subdivide it. This is a great path that he did. It looks fantastic. And uh, over here by Grumpy's base, and I'm not sure if Grumpy made this or Smith made this, I want to uh, take a look at this too, because between the path elements that Smith did and these boulders over by Grumpy's place, what I want to do is carry these design elements further up the meadow and kind of blend them with the design elements that I have and the design elements that are coming from the other direction to hopefully create something that makes the meadow a little bit more cohesive. Right now we're all kind of doing our own thing, which is perfectly great, but I wanted to bring these elements further up into the meadow, blend them together, and uh, hopefully give others some inspiration about how we can kind of blend our various bases together. I'm gonna leave this path right in front of our house uh, and where we connect with Alien. Um, we're gonna keep that a little bit plain. I'll, we'll blend that together once Alien has a little more work done on his house. but. I think with all these flowers, this was kind of the missing element that we had in our base. So huge shout out to Sunflower, Smith Custom, and Grumpy. Uh, they really good design elements to add here, and I and I hope that they're okay with me kind of blending these together. But the other thing is these flowers with all the different varieties in this pack, I really think has been the extra touch, and that has really brought things together. So aside from the pond, which I still need to clean up a little bit and add some interesting things, I'm gonna call the front of our base done. I'm not gonna say the exterior is done, but I'm gonna say the front is done. We just need to do a couple little more things with color here in the pond, and then you know, obviously do something about the staples in the back. But the exterior of our base is just about done. The interior, of course, is uh, not so much done. We'll be working on that on our next episode, but I think overall, we are in a really, really, really good spot. We have a beautiful base. We have ourselves an XP grinder. We have ourselves a gas farm. We have absolutely everything that we need for episode three to really start hitting the accelerator and propelling ourselves kind of into that next stage. I feel like we are have left the early game officially, and it is now time for us to transition over into the mid game, which we will be working on in our next episode. But that's going to be it for me in this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, please consider liking. Please consider subscribing. Uh, I really appreciate your support. I love you all to death, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.